Recent data is showing further signs of a turnaround in China's property market, with new home prices rising in 50 cities compared to the previous month. But some analysts say the country's real estate sector continues to remain under pressure. Joining me now to discuss the Chinese property market is Managing Director and Chief Economist at Mizuho Securities Asia, Xing Wang Shen. Thank you for joining me, Jing Wang. Now, first of all, looking at the most recent Chinese property data, are we seeing a rebound in China's property market, or do you think there will be further downward pressure on the market? Depends on which you are looking at. Uh, actually, now we see rebound in home sales and also a housing price. But we continue to see the decline in housing new stocks. The construction is still very weak. That's uh, actually the government is now uh, focusing on the price issue. So now when they see the price is stop declining or have some rebound and they get very worried. So they start to do more tightening. I think that will further make the housing investment decline. So which I think is pretty negative for the economy. In your opinion, what are the main factors to have contributed to the rise in month-on-month -month prices and the recovery of property sales in recent months? Uh, I think it's uh, for two reasons. First is that the tightening already lasted for almost uh, one and a half years. Uh, they, a lot of demand has been uh, compressed. Secondly, is the interest rate cut. Since April this year, the government cut the, the mortgage rate for the first-time home buyers, and also they cut the lending rate June, July. They start to stimulate a lot of demand from first home buyers. Then we see a price increase and also a surge in home sales in May, June, July. Well, this news has obviously sparked concern that this may deter the People's Bank of China from additional easing measures. Do you think this is the case? That's one reason why PBOC uh, has not yet cut triple R on interest rates. But there are also other reasons, like uh, rising inflation. I think inflation, especially food price, uh, will start to increase from August. So that's also limited their room. And also, I think uh, the, the labor market is still resilient. And uh, they want to avoid the repeat the same mistake made in 2009, uh, over stimulus to the economy. So I think these several reasons are behind uh, the fact that they don't want to issue another round of a huge stimulus package. So in that case, do you think more aggressive policy action needs to take place? There is a need, you know, to focus on the infrastructure investment and housing investment. I think they certainly won't repeat the same size of stimulus in 2008, 2009. They announced four trillion stimulus package, but in the end, the real stimulus package is around ten trillion. So this time around, I think they probably need to do something around four trillion in real size to prevent the economy from heading towards hard lending. What about the possibility of new property controls, which only last week investors were speculating could be introduced as early as this month? And are the tightened policies creating friction between the central government and the local governments? I certainly, I don't think it's needed to do further tightening, given the housing new stocks is now declining by 15% year on year. If the more tightening will depress the, the investment market and also will depress the land sales market. So that, that's why I think any new stimulus package will be quite minor, given the real binding, real uh, severe measures is uh, purchase restrictions, which are still in place. So that's why I think uh, new measures uh, will probably just be some, uh, some minor measures. Foreign direct investment in China fell to the lowest level in two years in July. Do you see further declines on the way? Mainly two reasons. First is the European uh, crisis. So the main decline the source country to Chinese FDI is from Europe. So European FDI to China declined by 20%. While US FDI to China actually uh, picked up. So I think that that's the first thing is the main uh, European uh, crisis uh, issue. Second issue is I think the rising labor cost. So that actually is a trend development. So increasingly multinational companies are not looking at China for the manufacturing basis. They are increasingly going to China to target domestic market. So that certainly will also uh, make uh, FDI into China lower than previous years. What about the outlook for Chinese property developers? Property developers, I think, will definitely uh, facing a quite challenging time, but also it will facilitate restructuring of the sector. You know, previously there are thousands of property developers in China. What we are seeing now is the small and medium-sized and weak property companies are closing down, while the top ones, the strongest ones, are actually are doing okay. So that's why you know it's not necessarily a bad thing. But what I'm worried most is the the decline in housing new staff in, from the investment side.
outlook. Okay, well, finally then, what is your outlook for China's property market during the next 12 months? Uh, I believe that uh, we will see some stable uh, price. I don't believe the price will surge like before. And also, I don't think price will decline uh, significantly. So I think price will remain stable. And housing sales uh, will remain stable, but probably not. we are not going to see a surge like in May, June. But I worried most is about housing new stocks. It probably will continue to decline, which are the main drag to the economy. I'm afraid that's all we have time for at the moment. Xing Wang Shen, thank you very much. Some very interesting comments made there. Now, Natalie McDonald will be discussing the commercial property sector and the shifts in trends later on today. So make sure you tune back in for that. But in the meantime, there is plenty to keep you updated and informed on Duke's Copy TV. Goodbye for now.